In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and things are created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. Father, you taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. In that Spirit, give us right judgment and the joy of his comfort and guidance. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like to give a brief talk on the importance of embracing your identity. So many people have asked me, Father, what's the meaning of life? How can I find fulfillment? Why are we here? I think the first question you need to ask is, who am I? Who am I? What's my deepest identity as a human being? And we need to start with God, your connection to God. You're first of all a son or a daughter of God the Father, a loving Father, a Father who's concerned about you, who protects you, who looks over you, who's always worried about you, trying to help you and sustain you. Personally, as a son, I knew my dad always had my back. I knew my dad loved me. I felt his esteem, his protection. I felt his, his interest in me. His love for me, his concern for me. He would give me that look of love every night as I was studying. That's that look of love that God the Father gives us every moment. He's looking down at, at us with love. That should give you a great sense of confidence and trust. Secondly, you're a brother or sister of Jesus Christ. If you're baptized, you were incorporated into the brotherhood of Christ. He became your brother. You became his sister. You became his brother. And he's someone who accompanies us and walks with us. He's present, as we know, in the Eucharist, in Scripture, in our daily life. He accompanies us in the darkness of life, in the trials of life. He inspires us with his example of love. He teaches us how to love, read Scripture, and try to, to find that inspiration for you. It's so powerful. But that's a part of who you are. You're connected to Christ as a brother. Just like I have two brothers and a sister, I consider Christ to be my older brother. I have three brothers. He's my favorite brother, my most important brother. And you're also temples of the Holy Spirit through baptism. I'm hoping to do a little series on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But to recognize you have this power within. It's the same spirit that Jesus Christ had in him. The Holy Spirit resides in you and your heart. He's there, present. Activate that. Be aware of that. Be aware of that power. The power of his wisdom. The power of his fortitude. The power of of his love that wants to burst through you, that wants to inspire you and guide you and sustain you and transform you. You're a temple of the Holy Spirit of God. That's who you are. And then secondly, you're also a spouse. Many of you, most of you are married who are listening to this video. You made a commitment to one person, one man, one woman, in good times and bad, sickness and, and health, until death do you part. That was a sacred bond in the presence of God that you made. As a human being, that's your most important task, not just to make it work, not just to hang on, not just to survive, but to make it beautiful, to thrive, to make it an inspiration for other couples, to make it a source of strength and inspiration for your children, to learn from your spouse, to grow in love for your spouse, to serve your spouse, to meet the needs of your spouse. That's part of who you are in, in the deepest sense of your identity. It's you're connected to this person. You have become one, one spirit, one body, one mind to grow in this unity. And obviously the Trinity is a symbol of that unity. And the more you make that more beautiful, the more fulfilled you're going to be. I can't think of any greater source of fulfillment than persevering in a beautiful way in your marriage. There's nothing better you can do for your kids. I can tell you having a mom and dad who did that. And thirdly, you are a mom or a dad. You've been entrusted with children. The sacred gift of life. Souls that will enter into eternal life. You're there to put them on that path. You're there to inspire them on the path to heaven. To remind them what life's all about. To teach them how to love. To teach them the school of virtue through your example through your kindness, through your patience, your patient endurance at times, right? You need to be very patient with your children, maybe accompany them in their darkness for a while. But remind yourself, you're not alone. God didn't just say, okay, here are these kids, good luck. I'll see you in 50 years. No. God's saying, these are my kids. I'm entrusting them to you, and I want to help you govern them. I want to help you form them. I want to help you mold them. I want to help you 
make them their hearts into my heart, to make them true Christians, true apostles, so we can change this world, make a dent in culture. It's not just about getting your kids into the best schools and helping them make the varsity sports team so they can get a Division I scholarship or helping them get into this hedge fund or into this particular job. That's fine. That's good. There's nothing wrong with that. But hopefully you're also concerned about making them apostles for Jesus Christ, helping them, reminding them that they're here to make a dent in culture. They're not here just to exist and survive and pay bills and, and make money and enjoy life. They're here to, to inspire people with the holiness of their life. And finally, I would just recommend all of you every single day to, to journal. To journal, yes, to buy a little notebook, buy a little journal, and write down every day, perhaps in the presence of God in a chapel, in adoration, if you can't, at least in the quiet of your room, and write down how you can see God's love working in your daily life. Look for that. God's love is all over the place. God's love is everywhere. It's in the smile of your daughter. It's in the woman at the cash register who may say, God blessed you. It's in the woman in the wheelchair who, who might just give you a little example of fortitude. It's in someone who's dealing with suffering. It's in an email sometimes or a text message. It's in something you notice at work or on the street. God's love is hidden, but sometimes it's obvious, and we need to discover that and recognize that and write it down. God, thank you for these acts of love that you've given me today. Thank him for that. Show gratitude for that. And also ask yourself, Holy Spirit, who is inside of me, where do you want me to go? What are you pushing me to do? You, you're trying to transform my heart into the heart of Christ. You're trying to make me more like Jesus Christ. What's missing? Am I getting in your way? How can I do that better? How can I console the heart of Christ? Tell me, inspire me, lead me, guide me. That's what fulfillment comes from. It's from embracing your identity. It's from being concerned about what God wants and going there. It's leaning into the Holy Spirit, leaning into the grace of God and praying so we can have the fortitude to walk down that path. It's recognizing God's love, his infinite love in so many ways in our life and not just focusing on the negative and the hardship and the darkness, but focusing on the beauty and the brightness and the light. That's how we discover the peace and joy of what it means to be Christian. That's how we can taste heaven on earth right now, right now. So I encourage you to take these points to heart. It's something I've processed as a priest. It's something I've seen work in my life and work in many souls' lives to embrace your identity, to recognize God's love, and to be docile to the Holy Spirit. May God bless you.